preparation for the talk. And I'm looking forward to introduce Andy. Um, short warning, the internet connection might be not fully reliable. And she wants to present the findings about data visualization. She is front end, a front-end developer and she's studying computer interactions. And she's going to talk about data visualizations in a very, yeah, on the web. Thank you very much for your introduction. I'm really happy to be here by Find Shanks and have the possibility to talk about this topic. I'm very interested in it, and it's a very important topic, I think. So I'm talking about accessible data visualization and web. This is a theme that I am exploring in my master's degree, uh, uh, my master's arbeit at the moment. And I wanted to take the opportunity to show you a few things that I've learned while I've been researching for my master paper, master qualification. I want to let you know that this presentation is under a Creative Commons license. We're going to start dart and visualization. So we're going to be looking at different places, for example, on internet. This kind of data visualization, something we could find. I've showed you a picture of a graph with the title average Marta consumption. We have the months from January to December 2000. 22 and off the y-axis, the average co consumption of Marta per day, bottles per day. And the data is data in a compiled data from three people. And I wanted to show you what I mean when I'm talking about visualization. Of course, there are other much more complex ways to show this, but this is an example. Here's another example, this visualization. I have a block diagram. On the x-axis, we have age groups from 0 to 4 to 99. And on the y-axis, we have the population in age groups, and this is as a. And this diagram I wanted to show maybe that there's often a lot of barriers. For example, the interpretation of data in imprint is not always ideal. For example, by this visualization, the text is very small and not readable. There's no title of the graph. And this is small examples for the many barriers that are unfortunately found in data and visualization in the internet. That means I've asked myself, how can we make this better? How can we look that data visualization, this we find or post an internet that we post that they are useful for people with disabilities? I decided to divide, show three different scenarios in this talk. So first, I would look at the scenario that we post a visualization online, for example, on Mastodon. The second that I want to look at is the designing of visualization. I think this is a situation where maybe people here are encounter the situation. So we'll look at what you can try to observe to make that accessible. The third scenario is coding on a visualization. I wanted to give you a small look. Uh, for ex example, when you have a data so source, what you need to pay attention to, um, that's, that's more accessible. We'll start with posting a visualization. So 
I will assume that we have a, a picture and we want to share this in the internet. So we'll show you the possibilities, what we have to make that accessible. We are restricted that we can't really change anything on the picture itself. But in this context, we have a finished picture, we want to share it, we can't change it. We'll have a look at this example. I have again a graph, and it's called Yana's Mata Consume 2022 Bottles Per Day. On the x-axis, we have the months from January to December 2022. And of the y-axis, we have the consumed bottles of Mata Flush and how many bottles a day from zero to two and a half. And it's when not talking about the data, we can see that the consumption went up and then drastically falls from August, from September onwards. So when we post this visualization, it's we should use a, 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 a picture description. This is important when we share pictures online that we just write a description for people who use a screen reader. So the description can be read when they come across this picture. So I want to give you a small description of, I don't know how many people know about this, what is an, a picture description, how do I make one? So for that reason, I'll give you some information about it. A picture description is a piece of text which describes the picture. The screen reader will read this for people that cannot see the picture. Here is an, is an example. I have a post on caster.social. This picture is a screenshot from a post with the title Cold and Wet. And it is a picture of a cat in the snow. So Gatsa, the poster, had made a description. You can listen to it with the screen reader. Or you can read it in certain clients. Here I have a screenshot from an Android client, and underneath the picture you can see a fluffy long-haired cat uh, sits in a, a tire track of, an, of a car in the middle of a snowy thing. A picture description can be added when you upload a picture. Here I have a screenshot from an upload in Mastodon, and right you can see the preview of the picture that I've just uploaded, and to the next you can see the text field field for the picture description. A small note here: uh, descriptions are not only for blind and uh, sight disabled. You can give it in any way. <coughs> How do you describe a visualization very well as not so trivial? P picture descriptions are, can really depend why you're posting the picture and which context are you posting it, what is important in this picture. That means there's not one specific right way perfectly to post, uh, to write a, a picture description. But we want to here, for example, describe a, a, a graph and we want to just give the, communicate the information clearly. Then we can use this model from Lundgaard and Satya Nairayan, accessible. So it's very helpful and you can orientate yourself on it. There are four levels. The over the um, <clears throat> what is the type of diagram, what's the name of it, what are the axes, and what so you can describe the, the bias basis of the picture. Then there's a statistic 
So this is, for example, the median, the biggest value or its comparisons. The third level is a visual phenomenon. So this level, this description section is about from trends and patterns. Here it goes on to communicate the things that are visually often visible, for example, trends, patterns, and exceptions. So I would it's very important that also this is in the picture description. The fourth level, the fourth is, level is about additional information and context. This is about that you provide additional information and insights and context. You should, depending on the situation, uh, do this and you need to pay attention that you don't overinterpret the data. You should only describe the data so that the person does not, yeah, you, you do not tell the person how to interpret the data. And therefore you have these four levels that I'm proposing here. So we just talked about additional information, level four. You don't have to process all of these steps in order, but you can look at these levels and write a text and see if the important parts are covered. And I have tried to do this here. This diagram we have seen earlier, so which is Jana's Mate Consume. I have added this uh, image description, a bar chart with the title um, Jana's um, Mate Consumption in bottles per day. On the x-axis there is the month January to December. And on the y-axis there is the average number of daily consumed bottles. The average value for the year is 1.35 bottles per day and the maximum lies at 2.7 bottles, which is in August, and the minimum is zero um, bottles per day in September, November and December. This is an example of how you can do an image description or image caption. Another advice I, I want to share is that if you have access to the data, or if you can link to the data that you provide a link so that, that yeah, which has the advantage that other people can also access the same data and people can yeah, use, yeah, also open the data for themselves. It's, it might not be always the best solution that people download the data themselves, but if you at least offer them the option of downloading the data in case, for example, if they don't understand the data visualization, so they can directly look at the data themselves. And I would like to proceed to the second scenario, which is the design of a visualization. So imagine we have data and we want to create a visualization. For, we could, can do this by hand or maybe use a tool to generate the visualization. So I assume we have a table of data. So this is data from the statistical um, office from Germany, the, the number of births and deaths across the years. And when we want to do a visualization, then 
we want to create something like this, which looks like this, yeah. We can do a simple line plot where we have the year numbers from 1950s till today. And then you show on the y-axis the levels and you have one line for the birth and one line for the deaths. And some people might notice some things that can be improved. One thing is that the text is rather small and the contrast is not very high. And this is the first thing I would recommend. Make sure you have a good contrast, that things are easy to read. So here I have an improved version on the next slide and you see the text is bigger and the contrast is higher. What you might also have noticed that I've used the colors red and green, which obviously is a problem for people who have color blindness, which means you should avoid this combination of colors. Um, when you pick colors for visualizations, look online um, for pre-made color palettes that are designed for people with color blindness. This is the third version of this diagram and now the red line is a more powerful red and the blue line is more it's a deeper blue and I used to have a legend for this plot which explained um, the different lines but now there is no longer a legend because the lines are directly labeled and at the end of the red line you see yeah you see the, um, the labels and even if someone is unable to distinguish the colors they can simply follow the lines and see what each line stands for and now I've added a fourth version um, so I added a title um, so which is um, the number of deaths and births and I have labeled the X and Y axis with um, the year and the number per year. This is an additional step that we have to, that we should take into account when we make visualizations, we should include labels and we should include ta uh, titles. This was, these were my tips for design and I would now like to talk briefly about coding a visualization and that means that given a source of data, we have data, we want to generate a visualization using code, it might be dynamic and of course there are many methods for doing that. Various libraries exist, and of course I cannot cover each and every option, but I will show you one example. I have another data set here. This slide contains a table. One column is age, and that's groups of age, so zero to four, five to nine years, and so on. The second column is population of that age. So again, this is a data set by the Statistical Office of the German government which shows you the breakdown of the German population into age groups. If we use this data set, for example here, I have used JavaScript and uh, the 3JS coding this uh, column diagram. Every column, uh, the x-axis has the age groups starting with 0 to 4, up to 95 to 99 years of age. The centenarians and older are not included. The y-axis uh, uh, have the numbers 
from zero to seven million. So how can we code this in a way that people with or without restrictions can access it quite easily? And one of the things I've learned and that I would recommend is to offer alternatives. Alternatives to the visualization. So even if it's not a picture, but uh, an SVG element, perhaps we should add an image description for people that use a screen reader, which then can listen to a rough description of the image. But also, additionally, we could offer the data in tabular form somewhere on the website, maybe on the same page that contains the visualization or as uh, via a link using a sub page, but having some way of seeing the data in a table that helps people that, for example, have listened to the image description, but are interested in certain details that may not have been included in the description, or maybe if the person simply wants to verify that the description is still current and that the data is still the one in the description, they can then refer to the table and find this out. And again, what I would like to recommend, as I've said before, <clears throat> is a sonification so that people can access the data as a whole. Oh, so not, not sonification, a download. So maybe offer the raw data as a CSV file to download. Uh, CSV should be compatible with uh, various kinds of software. And another thing that is possible that might be not as straightforward to implement, but if you can manage, it would be cool to offer a sonification that is some way of mapping the data not to visual elements, but to sound. So you can imagine with a column diagram or histogram like that, uh, something I did in my master thesis work, every column in the histogram could be represented by a sound if the value is small, the tone could be low, and higher values could be represented by a higher tone, higher pitch. And uh, you can then listen to all the data one after the other, and that gives you a good idea of the shape of the columns, not as exact as a visual representation, of course, and not very trivial to implement, I have to say. But it is a cool option. Here is an example from a screenshot from my prototype. So that, this is from the sidebar of my visualization. There is the sonification headline. Listen to the data. The next line says, then there is a headline called download. Download the data as a CSV file and then table. Open the data as a table. And here is a screenshot from the sub page where I have the data in tabular form. You have the headline table, population of Germany, uh, and then text, population in Germany, divided into age groups. Every age group uh, spans five years. And then there's the actual table, and there's a link back to the visualization on top of that subpage. So that is one way of, one possible way of implementing this. Now, these are all approaches to offer alternatives to the visual representation. Another perhaps ideal thing would be to make the elements of the visualization themselves accessible for keyboard and screen reader users. We've talked about design already, but also for screen readers. This is about the individual visual elements within the visualization being made accessible somehow. Using the histogram as an example, we now see a tooltip on one of the columns that says age 35 to 39 and population 5,236,000. 
if we have interactive elements like this, it's important to make them accessible. So this tooltip doesn't uh, must, should not only appear if I hover over it with the mouse, but these columns should then also be able to be tabbed onto using the keyboard, and, and that should make the tooltips disappear appear as well. And uh, if we use D3JS generating SVG elements for this, we should also group SVG elements. So all the SVG elements belonging to the y-axis should be grouped and be given a label for the screen reader, telling the screen reader that this is the y-axis so that you can go through all the elements in the visualization, navigate through them using the keyboard and the screen reader. And if you then use a screen reader, you get sensible output. For example, if you touch the axes or the individual columns. Now, with a more complex and more interactive visualization, this is quite non-trivial, but this is a topic of current research, finding best ways to do this. Again, another hint, I've mentioned some of these, to make elements accessible, you can give the axis area labels as a property. You can make the columns tabbable using properties such as tab index equals zero. And we can label the columns uh, using area label or associate them with the tooltip content using area label by so that we can uh, see this. And, the, and another thing um, I found important that, I've, that I read, read about screen reader users must be given the communication that they actually are facing a visualization right now or when a visualization starts. Because it's a frequent problem that screen reader users don't really notice when they actually encounter a visualization, partly because it's not at all made accessible or doesn't have any description, or partly because some SVG elements um, includes random texts that are somewhere in the document object model, so that individual tick marks, for example, are starting to be read out. And screen readers have no idea, screen reader users have no idea what is actually being read to them. So if you want to try this, making things accessible, then somewhere at the beginning of the visualization include an image description or some kind of short label, identifying the whole element as a visualization or a diagram or whatever they have. Now to end, I have a resource that I'd like to recommend to you. It's not from myself. It's something that I found in context from my research. And what I, I think it's very cool. It's called Chartability. It's in Vickle from Frank Elavsky, and you can find it at the website chartability.fiz.studio. Fiz with F-I-Z-Z. -Z. And it's a criteria catalog. So you can check if your own data visualizations are accessible. And so it's built up in a similar way to the web accessibility guidelines. So there's various criteria. I've got an example here, for example, the criteria for low contrast. So it's about checking if the colors that we've used have enough contracts and that they're recognizable, that they have enough contrast. So it's a recommendation when you have a involved with data visualization, when you post it, code it, or we could have a look at chargeability, it's made very well. There's a lot of work put into it. It's based on the web accessibility guidelines, and I find it very helpful to audit data visualization. So, that's that. I hope it was interesting for you, and I hope you could take something from it. 
when you have questions, feedback or comments, you can write me on Mastodon. I'm envy at chaos.social and you can also put your questions to me now. Cool. Great. So the first question, it came right at the start. You mentioned three different areas of the, the posting, the designing and the coding. And by posting, the question came if these image descriptions can be found on search machines. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really say something about that. Um, so, so sometimes some people wrote keywords for search engine optimization that this would help in the ranking. But I, I just would tell people, please don't do this. Don't write some trash into the meta tags or in the labels. And I also don't think that this is working anymore. Yeah, but that's good to know. For, for it, it seems to work and people have used it, which is great. Okay, one question or a comment combined with a question is it's about a specific commercial product, but I'd like to say this question regardless. So you can put a put uh, for PDFs and you can put a image description in the PDF, in the final PDF. But there's a specific office program which has always a problem when you try to make it accessible. Do you have experience how useful and how these tools are built into commercial programs? No, unfortunately, I can't really say much to that, but I know that there is software where you can, in, in the, when you can generate visualizations for the web, and there are really differences where, where tools have good ideas how to implement this, but, but if you actually search for it, you will find it. And there are also differences. So there are actually tools that also provide sonification support and really put an effort into um, yeah, providing additional accessibility. Um, but this is all focused on web tools because I, I know my way around on, with web tools. But thank you so much for the information. I think with these commercial possibilities, that you just have to try it out. Another question that seems very interesting is, is if anywhere off in social media or in other areas, there's a possibility to make audio image description so instead of takes a spoken word with a with, with a sound file uh, i unfortunately don't know that um, but maybe somebody else there knows it from the viewers and can post an, a, a, an a answer to this question because it's very interesting when you can speak it Yes, but I'm still not so sure about this. I need to yeah, emphasize that I don't have any impairment, but based on what I know, that it's that, yeah, that people with screen readers are able to yeah, read the text very quickly because they have configured their tools to read the things very quickly because they are also trained to process the information that quickly. So reading, yeah, listening to sound might actually be worse than 
screen readers, but this is, I don't really know how to judge this. This is uh, interesting to think about, definitely. Okay. You had a lot of data from the statistic uh, Bundesamt, which you showed us. Are there particular areas where you say that there's a lot of examples uh, come where visualization is not well done? And which areas are, uh, there, there are definitely room for the most improvement? I'm not sure if I understand the question. What do you mean with areas? Um, the, the statistic Bundesamt, for example, uh, are they particular or are there particular websites or particular social media platforms that have a lot to do or, or uh, are there some that make do it especially well? I just want to. So I just want to emphasize that the images that you've seen here, I've created them myself. The data is from the statistical federal agency, but the the images that I've made, yeah, they, they I've created them myself. And I also can't judge um, how the statistical Bundesamt has actually processed the data themselves and presented it. Okay, great. Thank you. Then And I'll look to see if there's any more questions. There are no more questions. Okay, good then. I'd just like to say thank you very much. Yes, thanks also to you. I'm really happy to have the opportunity to present part of my research of a master thesis here. So that it's not just vanishing somewhere in a cupboard and I will continue to yeah, work with this topic. And if you have further questions, feel free to write to me. Also, if you have tips for me. Great. Then I'll say thank you very much. Thank you on everyone who asked questions and everybody that's working in